threatening to shut down the country. The idle no more protesters blocked border crossings across the country yesterday. They say they will continue their protests and the transportation disruptions, even though the prime minister has agreed to a meeting with First Nations chiefs. Teresa Spence also says she will continue her fast. Well, let's bring in Pam Pometer. She's a lawyer and a spokesperson for the Idle No More movement. Uh, Ms. Pometer, thanks very much for being here. I, a lot of people looking at these images of the delays and disruptions on the border in particular might ask, how on earth is that helping your cause? How is it getting public opinion on your side? Well, when you think about it, what we're trying to do is educate both Canadians and Americans about how the Harper government's omnibus bills, which gut environmental and water protections, will impact both sides of the border. And it's really hard to um, educate on the other side of the border when, you know, Canadian issues aren't very high profile. So by causing temporary minor uh, border slowdowns and handing out leaflets and giving out information, that's a really direct way of, of informing informing Amer both Americans and Canadians about what's happening. And to date, the ones that we've done in the past have been very successful, including the temporary highway and rail slowdowns. And in, in some of those uh, slowdowns, we actually have people get out of their cars and, and join us on these slowdowns and, and want to ask more questions. Okay, let, let's go to the heart of the issue here, though, and that is what is the ultimate objective? What are you hoping to achieve? What is that one thing that the Prime Minister can say that is going to make you go, ah, there we are, we're uh, situation resolved? Well, there's nothing he can say that's going to say situation resolved because that's all we ever get from politicians is all of their flowery wording. And similarly, one meeting that's being called a first step isn't going to cut it either because uh, we've had 5,000 first steps. What we need is the next step forward, an actual commitment to action. So I think at this meeting, uh, the best uh, Prime Minister Harper could do is come in and say, listen, We've got, we're going to put some good faith on the table, and here's what it is. We're going to deal with the crisis in First Nation communities around lack of water, housing, sanitation, education, and we're going to do that immediately. And then we're going to set up a process, a longer-term process, to deal with how we're going to deal with the lands and resources. Now, if he made an actual commitment to that, that would be some form of success. You mentioned, though, Bill C-45. That was the yeah. Budget Implementation Act, the omnibus, yeah. omnibus bill. Uh, are you calling on the government to withdraw the Budget Implementation Act? Oh, yeah. At least the provisions that impact uh, the lands, waters, and First Nations, because it's not just C-45 and C-38, for example. There's about 14 pieces of legislation that's being imposed on First Nations without their knowledge, consent, and, and against their will. That's a very easy thing for the Prime Minister to do. All of those bills that haven't passed yet, take them off the table until they get First Nation consent. How in the end does all this end? Is there ever an end to this? Well, that's the whole point of this movement and why we're asking Canadians to stand beside us because we have got to deal with this treaty relationship once and for all. I mean, we, we started out with nation-to-nation -nation relationships. We made a treaty promise to share these lands and resources that we would all have some wealth and prosperity. So far, that's only been Canada. First Nations remain at the bottom of all socioeconomic indicators, and that's clearly not a just relationship. We need to sit down and work this out once and for all because nobody wants to be here perpetually. We have to do something, or there's going to be a much greater flashpoint at some point in the future. You know, here's, here's what may be an obvious question to some, and that is that if we have a number of northern communities, uh, native communities, uh, that are uneconomic, uh, that have got sort of systemic problems. Why not move some of those communities? It's happened in other parts of Canada when communities become non-sustainable. Uh, is that something that might be looked at as well? I would say no, because you have to look at the root causes of the extreme poverty in those northern communities. Is it their location? And nine times out of ten, these northern communities are located next to diamond mines, oil fields, chromium deposits. They're in some of the most wealthiest places in Canada. So the issue isn't, isn't that there are resources. It's that those resources aren't being shared with those communities and that everybody else but those communities are benefiting from it. And when, you, and when you think about it, these communities are 100% controlled by Indian Affairs. 
Indian Affairs and the Indian Act has controlled uh, everything that happens on First Nations for the last 150 years. So if there's any finger pointing to be done, it's to look at the giant 5,000 person Indian Affairs bureaucracy, bureaucracy and say, you're not doing your job. Pam Pommet here, joining us from Toronto this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, we asked Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Duncan to come on the program. He was not available, but his parliamentary secretary is, and he joins us now by phone. Greg Rick Rickford, welcome to the West Block. Good to have you here. Uh, let me just start with you, uh, Mr. Rickford, on the ongoing protests. Uh, in your view, well, what is your view of the ongoing protests, even though a meeting has been set up for next week? Well, first of all, you know, going back to before the Crown First Nation gathering, there was a joint action plan that was um, done by the minister and the national chief at Leo, focusing on land claim, government, governance, education, uh, some of the issues mentioned uh, by uh, the uh, previous. Uh, at the time of the Crown First Nations gathering, we arrived at a work plan on a number of things we wanted to see move forward. We know that these are long-term challenges, Tom, but we have remained committed to and um, as recently as November, National Chief uh, at Leo met with the Prime Minister and set up future meetings, follow progress, and ensure we're making progress in all of these items. So um, we uh, uh, have faith that this nation will determine the composition of a delegation uh, later this week uh, and uh, will move forward, continue to move forward on, on the EP, uh, particularly economic development and um, okay. uh, treaty work. Uh I'm not sure I heard an answer to how you think, uh, how you feel about the protest, but let's well, move let's on to something I'll answer else here. that, uh, Tom. In, yeah. in, in terms of various protests and demonstrations, you know, in, in this country, people have the right in, to demonstrate and express their points of view peacefully, as long as they obey the law and, and certainly don't, from a public safety perspective, jeopardize uh, transportation in, in I think the Canadian population expects everyone will obey the law in holding such protest, protests. Beyond that, Let's, we'll, you know, we would leave that to uh, local uh, law enforcement uh, officials. Okay. That, that's me. Let's very quickly go to, to, to the substance. Uh, the Idle No More group said, you just heard them, they said, remove uh, elements of the budget implementation bill from the table, specifically the Navigable Waters Act, environmental review provisions in, in, in that act as well. First of all, are you prepared to do that? And secondly, and this is really important, were the Aboriginal communities and leaders consulted in advance of this legislation being presented? There are numerous examples of, of where we have performed extensive consultation and responded directly to the requests of First Nations chiefs to provide them with more flexibility. The clauses in Bill C-45 with respect to decisions to lease out their land not only remain voluntary for First Nations but have significantly and positively impacted communities like the Penticton Indian back, uh, Band, sitting there on the edge of the beautiful city of Penticton, Fond du Lac, uh, Denisulan First Nation, communities that can develop uh, jointly with, uh, with the private sector on major resource. Ring of Fire, Tom, is another example. We have First Nations communities, contrary to what has been said just previously, working through an environmental assessment process. They're generating small business center activities in their communities, and they're developing capacity in land mapping. And that process okay. is well underway. So to say that Bill C-45 right. uh, um, counter uh, it has a, a negative impact on that is simply untrue. We, we can All right. We've got to, unfortunately, we've got to leave it there. We're out of time. But uh, Greg Rickford, thanks very much for being here this morning. I appreciate your time. Appreciate it, Tom. Thanks.